put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Hitman Agent 47 Movie Review A cloned killer by the identity of 47 teams up with a young woman who has some skills that she can't quite explain and tries to help her find a man that she's been searching for and there are people out to kill them there is more but that would be spoilery but more to the point no there is not a lot of plot to this and it yeah, the, the movie pretty well embraces that. There's surprisingly much character, but yeah, this is, you know, it's based on a series of games with very little story where you play as 47, the clone killer, and you kill, like, really well. And actually... The movie opens with an exposition dump that pretty much tells the audience quite a lot of what 47 knows and very little of what the young woman's name is Katja, what Katja, you know. So we're kind of, we spend the first portion of the movie waiting for Katja to be told what we've just been told. I don't know if this was like a last minute you know, studio edition or something, but I kind of wish that at least the exposition dump at the opening would be would have been really good to completely get rid of. I will say I do quite enjoy the opening action scene. 47 kills at least a dozen people before the credits have stopped rolling and right after they've stopped rolling probably a dozen more at least and that's that's this kind of movie and basically yeah that's that's a really fun opening action scene but if you remove that then for a while for the first third of this it plays out and and I thought this when I just watched the trailers the the very first trailer it plays like the terminator with 47 in place of the terminator and you see some of this in the trailer you know you got Zachary Quinto expositioning to the the target of 47 and you know while the, while they're driving the car you know you see 47 unproblematically enter and leave a you know a seemingly secured you know location with actual like official like police type people you know he takes out a bunch of attackers that knew that they were taking him on and yeah it's yeah it seriously plays plays like that I I I would almost bet money, I would bet money, that if you search through the the scripts of this, that you know, the, the various copies that have been, somewhere on one of them, there is like a, a parenthesis somewhere in, in the first third that says, you know, like, 84 is the Terminator, because it really, it, it really feels like that, and I dig that, and... I kind of wish that the movie hadn't... The trailers, of course, also spoil that, but you can... This is another one of those movies where try to avoid the trailers. I was surprised by how much they managed to keep secret as well as spoil. It was very nice, interesting, kind of double... Yeah, but... Yeah, the, the movie sadly does, you know, tell a lot from 
really early on, and still it does leave some nice surprises for later. So, yeah, there are some twists, but it never really gets to be a complex story, although there are themes. Thematically, this is way smarter than it has any right to be. I... Yeah, actually, I, I, without spoiling anything, this is a movie about clones and cloning technology. Cloning and a person is identified as someone who knows about cloning. And it really, it gets into this, you know, determinism versus free will debate and like you know well okay so these clones you know this or these clones program specific but can still make choices you know it's still you know it, it almost what is that batman because you know it's not who we are it's not who we are it's what we do that defines us you know it yeah but it's you know basically the movie plays out with, and not a spoiler, basically, you know, these people are hunting 47 and Katja, and the two of them, you know, spend some time, you know, just staying safe, and also some time, you know, sort of fighting back. They don't just, you know, sit on their hands. Now, the this in in this one, they they make the very wise choice with Katya to to make her useful because that's it's really difficult. I understand how the two thousand and seven movie ended up the way it did. I mean, it's it's kind of like a a train wreck. You can you can see all the places that it should have like, you know, just corrected and not. But it still. But at its core, yeah, you kind of do have to have at least one more character there, and it might be interesting if it's a woman. And that's not necessarily. I mean, these two movies. The first one has a ton of sexual tension. This one has almost none, but there's still, I mean, she, she's still, she's an attractive young woman. And it's, you know, so, so even without having that, it's still, you know, good to have kind of male-female interplay. And it's, it's easy to market, you know, say, oh, well, there's not just, it's not just guys, there's a hot chick in this. And, yeah, it's, you, you... As much as I love the games, you can't just have a single character. It it wouldn't work as well for a mainstream piece. And excuse me, where in the first one it's him towing around this poor sex worker who is, I mean, she's not trying to be annoying. She's she and she does. She's not trying to be annoying, and in this one, they make the wise choice of making her supremely useful. Like, they're constantly, like, 47 is, is telling her, you know, okay, use your ability, help me out here. And it's literally, and you can tell, it's, it's like, he gets by, he gets by fine, but now that she's here, they might as well use, you know, she is immensely useful and it's yeah it's it's a cool kind of tag team thing where yeah constantly you know okay you know market for when I should you know do this or go there and do that you know just yeah and of course they do have this very fun thing of with <laughs> She's not. She has. She she knows that she has these abilities, and she knows how to use them. 
but she didn't grow up a warrior. She's she stayed off the, off the grid, although not necessarily quite knowing why she does, but, you know. And, yeah, he needs her to fight, so there are times where it's like, you want me to do what? And it's, yeah, it's it's fun. But, but yeah, so they basically took that kind of sort of element from Hitman Absolution, but in this she actually uses it. And the, you know, he, he is part of the ways, you know, teaching her some, you know, helping her master these skills and such. Last minute notes. The movie is 93 minutes, and there is a mid credit scene, but yeah, it's like you'll you'll barely have had time to get out of your seat or anything. So yeah, and it's like five seconds or something. Now this, you don't have to have played the games. You don't. If you go into this not knowing that there are video games based on it, you're gonna follow it fine. And you're, I mean, if you go into this expecting huge, just you know, nicely choreographed and cleverly done action, but just, you know, one guy gunning down, like I said, over the course of the film, dozens of people, and, you know, you see him, you, you know, it, there's, there are, you know, car chases, various, yeah. If that at all appeals to you, yeah, you, you you know, you might really, really get into this movie. And I found it pretty easy to keep track of, you know, yeah, keep track of what was happening in the action scenes, which is important and impressive for how much and how fast the, yeah, and it's, and also, you know, compared to the first one. I already mentioned that there, you know, with with Katya, she's an attractive young woman. There's no real sexual tension between them the way there is, you know, in the first one. There are, yeah, you, you also see in the in the trailers, and it's not a spoiler. There are two scenes where it manages to get her, you know, half naked and wet. She's a cleanly girl. Seriously, one of the two has no reason to exist whatsoever. You could cut it completely. The first one actually does kind of, sort of, have something of... Yeah, there's, there's, you know... When, when you see why it's taking place, you'll, you know, basically understand. But, you know, it's an excuse, but it's still... There is at least sort of an excuse. With the second one, it's just, well, you know, we could put that here, so... And the... In the trailers, you see some gadgets. The very opening, it seems like the gadgets are gonna do 47's work for him. And they do... He also uses them a little bit in the climax, but other than that, you know, as soon as he's done in that first scene with using gadgets, it actually, you know, calms down significantly. And, you know, you get to see him actually, you know, fire weapons himself and use, you know, hand-to-hand -hand use his knives and such. And the... I oh, I kind of mentioned early on. She even even early on, we see that she has this aversion to being touched, and you know it's there's yeah you you can tell that she she is like I said she she's staying off the grid. That's said almost immediately and. Yeah, so so part of that is, of course, you know, avoiding 
you know, direct physical contact. And I know, like Rogue, they even have her longingly look at other people, you know, enjoying physical contact. They do actually, they do this really, really early on. They do a little bit too much. It's like, do you get it? Do you get it yet? She doesn't like being touched. Have you have you noticed that about her? It's it's just shot after shot of of her like like she starts out at this I, I guess library or something and like the the librarian is trying to say I'm I'm sorry I can't help you and you know kind of just you know touch her sym sympathetically and she avoids that okay though she's you know she's on the bus and she's she's holding that you know when when you're standing in a bus. This is going to be absolutely nonsense to you Americans, I know. You know, and someone else comes over and to hold it and then she backs off and just over and over in those first minutes. And it's like, okay, we get it. It's, it's, <laughs> the, the movie knows that it's not aiming for the, the highest... Yeah. The, this film... This is an extraordinarily stylish film. And it really gets across how her senses are heightened and she kind of has this she can basically she has a great intuition and her senses are heightened and this helps her avoid being noticed and you know and there are other things you know obvious things such as you know passport stuff so she can stay off the grid and such that she actually has to pay money for but yeah it, the, the movie communicates that really well and uses her abilities really well and this gets 47 how he's almost like a machine really well that's you know the first one also made him too you know gave him too many lines had him too in spite of relatively few overall, and just, yeah, had him too, too chatty, too emotive, which, you know, it's difficult to pull off this, this kind of thing, but this one does it better. In this, early on, there's this bit where he's, 47 sets up a, a thing to scan for Katya. And he sets it up, and then he sits there and waits for a few seconds. And then, because nobody has any patience today, he of course gets up, and it's like, well, what am I gonna do? And what does he do? He sits down, and just sits completely still. And then we see he cuts back hours have passed. It's gotten dark. He's still sitting in that exact same position. And then his computer beeps, you know, found something, and then he gets up and goes over. So it really gets that across you know, both understands and gets that across very nicely and very early on. And the... She kind of suppresses her emotions and she... She's trying to find a man, although she doesn't quite know. If you watch the trailers, you might have, yeah, you you probably already know, or yeah, you can maybe kind of guess it. It's impressive that she didn't, but whatever. And she also, she and Forty Seven both have incredible memory and. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's said fairly early on, like, they have very distinct memories from very, from, from, you know, an early age, and it's actually, it gets silly with that, frankly, and, and in general, her, excuse me, her abilities, you know, do get, get, you know, overly, you know, you don't quite buy it, but then do you buy a, a cloned killer who has better reflexes, you know, is, is smarter and faster than human beings? You know, you're, you're, you're taking the blue pill if you're even going, you know, wait, where's the red? Anyway, you're, you're taking, 
you're taking a pill if you if you get into this one and that's that's right there at the yeah there there are things in this that are very different from the the trailers and I feel like yeah, deja vu I've been saying that a lot recently but it's it's not like really bad there there are some of it where they just switch a few lines around so someone is responding to something you know that they weren't originally and and such and yeah it's not really you know you you maybe notice it but it's not distracting and you don't really feel like you you're missing something that should be there there was one bit where it looked like they had one particular action scene was going to take place and then something else happened and yeah it it was only that one and it really it wasn't a big deal i never felt like the the trailers had really tricked me particularly it you know there there are things in there that are different in the movie but the trailers don't really promise there's there's that one brief action bit but other than that the trailer you know the movie delivers what the trailers promise i would say the there's one in addition to being chased by the 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 organization they are at one point fairly early on there is basically a a bounty is put on their heads and you know a few freelance people show up and try to kill them and this is basically just so that they could inject action scenes where you know there otherwise wouldn't really be because it wouldn't make sense for the the organization themselves to take part in these action scenes so it's literally just and, and it's completely like if you didn't have the the brief line about it the audience would be like what just who are these people and it doesn't go anywhere at all it's literally just there to justify a little bit of extra action there's this thing of Katja is continually like really irritated by 47 and it's <laughs> and that's again that's also that's good it's good to have conflict between main characters and yeah it's just I again it was just kind of annoying in the 07 I, I feel bad for Olga Coriol Olga because she she did great in the movie it has nothing to do with her she did as well as she possibly could with the writing that they gave her and the character that was just you know just just from the onset you don't want 47 to be dragging around this girl where you'd expect him to just find a safe place for her like he doesn't have solution but in this you know it's actually fun because they are they have similarities they're not quite equals but you know, so so when she says, like, there's, yeah, she she literally says to him, "I'm gonna kill you," and it's it's yeah, it's it's the, you know, yeah, it you know obviously she doesn't mean it. Oh, of course he takes it completely seriously and says, "I'm not that easy to kill." Actually, yeah, he he knows he's not actually going to do it but but yeah it's just when when she says that it you know you kind of yeah it's there is a sort of yeah not necessarily quite equal but colleague they're they're colleagues and it it works you i don't know some people might hate her i personally thought she was a great you know a great character and a just yeah I I myself would not I mean again if we're doing mainstream movie 
you can't have just the one guy who hardly ever talks and who doesn't, you know, in the games, you know the background because you read the briefings and, you know, and the stuff there is can even be, like, some of the games barely have story, and when there's story, it's suddenly like a lot at a time. And that can be more okay for for that. And really, the games have more backstory for both 47 and the various targets he kills than anything. There's, there's not that much plot, just... yeah. And... where the the movies have to justify how is why are we following 47 and why isn't he the bad guy and really the, the games as well but the games have always gone in one distinct direction other than of course He's the player character, so you kind of have to... If, if you're playing the game, you're following him, or directing him, as it were. And, yeah, in each case, you know, the, the, the targets in the games and the people he goes after in these movies are evil people. So it's the Dexter kind of thing. He is killing people who are worse than him. And, you know, thus putting his skill set to good use. And the and the the trailers don't show a lot of like sneaking, using disguises, infiltrating, and carefully planning hits. Although you know you do see that it's just as slick as the games, and you know it gets the the action that really shows how capable 47 is and makes him badass and yeah what the what there is of that though is overall in the in the film you do get some nice sneaking with 47 avoiding being seen like there's there's a scene where he says if i shoot them if, if I shoot one of them, the rest will come running. And, you know, you see they've got, like, assault rifles. So, okay, we're going to think of something else. And, yeah, get some, some sneaking action. He uses disguises and... Excuse me, I think that... The first did something clever as far as disguise stuff goes. This one does as well. And... Yeah, he. We don't usually see the plan until it's being executed or has been, which is also similar to the first. But he does very clearly plan, and yeah, there's there's some infiltrating going on as well. And the You know, as as far as the whole anti-hero thing goes, it's of course, also, you know, civilians and cops, you know, he... 47 seems to try to avoid killing anyone that, yeah, isn't a target and, yeah, isn't, you know, and the targets are evil, so... And the... What story there is to the games is basically the origin story of 47 and there's there's some other stuff but it gets yeah and and this goes into the origin and I'm really really glad to yeah they 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 pretty well stuck to it it's I mean some, some of the details have been changed but these are clones, these are not, you know, runaways who are just, yeah, this is, and, and it's like, it's spelled out right from the start. This guy does genes, and he did genes to do clones. It's, it's literally right there in the, the very opening exposition dump. And they, of course, have to refer to them as, you know, agents. They're not 
agents. The the games would do this as well. I, I think in Absolution they say, a hitman? Are you sure? Because that word doesn't just exist in the common English language and mean a guy you hire to kill someone else. In the games, 47 is a Series 4 Class 1 clone and the number 47 I believe means he is number 47. I think in the first one there's some detail about how it's actually a chromosome that's been changed, you know, 46 human chromosomes, a 47th chromosome, kind of, yeah, but whatever. Why not just go with that? Series 4 Class 1 clone, or at least Series 4 clone. And it's not like the, the movie is particularly afraid of the clone word, the way the first one was. And the 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 in both this and the first, the you know there's there's the tiny little bit left. It's it's not completely bald. It's not you know it's it's shaved mostly down. But you know, I would say that it. I personally find it forgivable, and it's, yeah, I, I think it would, as much as I really prefer they, they try to get as many details, you know, if, if you watched, just, just you know, watch the, the first trailer, if you're a really big fan, read the barcode, and yes. Now, th this is very much a reboot of the first one, not even like hints and nods. You know how the, the, the Incredible Hulk had a little bit of stuff that was like, oh, well, maybe, you know, Ang Lee's 2003 Hulk kind of happened. Yeah, this one has nothing. Like, it is, this is very clearly completely different. And, of course, still written by Skip Woods. He did a lot better this time. There's there's very little in this that I really like really take issue with as far as the writing goes. Now anyone reviewing this is of course, you know, there's the issue of how much you know, how much experience does one have with the games? Well, I mean, I do have some experience with the various ones like I mean it's only been like maybe a dozen times that I've played through each getting you know killing everyone killing no one but the target trying out every single disguise finding every path hiding all bodies leaving all bodies behind using every single weapon possible trying to use as few weapons as possible, finding every single possible way to complete every single level. Yeah, I'm a nerd. The um, I found that Tim Timothy Oliphant was fine in the first one, and I certainly don't have any problem with. He's, I really love him in in a lot of stuff. Something that really comes to mind when I think Timothy Oliphant and, and fun is the perfect getaway. That really, yeah, the the this whole thing of you know, yeah, just he's he's a lot of fun in in that one. And I mean, he did, you know, he played the elegant psychopath. In, in the first one, and yeah, that, he was okay, he had the walk down, and yeah, I just, it got too mainstream, you know, speaking of, and Rupert Friend here, who I've never seen in anything else, but I'm gonna, he plays it this, you know, cold, detached, in control of the situation, and, you know, I read in reviews of the, the first one pointing out that, you know, you know, the, the,
best contract killers in movies aren't, you know, particularly pretty. And, you know, you could argue that Rupert Friend is still too pretty. But I would say he has a ordinary face. He's, he's not unattractive, not at all, but no homo. But he, you can believe that this guy could blend in, you know, bald head and barcode notwithstanding. You know, he, yeah, I mean, yeah, there, there are times where he really, you can, you can just see him falling in with the crowd completely. And, yeah, the, Timothy Oliphant, you know, it's, you know, I mean, he's not, he's not Brad Pitt or like, you know, but he does still kind of have a film star or supermodel face. You know, he's, you, you recognize him, you know, I mean, you know, some, sometimes you can kind of hide, the perfect getaway hides that with, with some scruffy kind of thing and, and just, but, although in, in that movie he's still a very attractive guy, but yeah, it's, you know, in the moment you shave everything away, it's just, it really shows, and yeah, he, he just has this really yeah, GQ face, and Rupert Friend, yeah, you can see this guy just disappearing into the crowd, because there's no, no, and, and that's what 47, again, not, disregarding the, the bald head with a barcode on it, and an ordinary face, although a, a very intense face. And intense eyes, which Rupert Friend really, really captures. He's he's pretty terrifying. And again, if you if if you try to ignore the opening exposition dump and just watch the movie and pretend like you fully believe that this is you know this is the Terminator and forty seven is the T eight hundred, and it's he's he's pretty terrifying, but. Yeah, he he plays it with this sort of sense of superiority where, you know, he's rarely surprised, although he can still be, and just, yeah, he thinks of clever and effective ways to kill people. And, yeah, it just, it really, it, it works. And there's, you know, like there's this, yeah, not, not a spoiler, there's a bit in, and you see this, some in the trailer as well, where he's just asked this, you know, serious question about, like, you know, killing people, and he's just like, yup, and it's just, you know, there's, there's no, and that's how you, I, I really love that, that approach, and that, and his performance in this, and I really think that that was the better choice of the two, and, yeah, I, as much as I hate the 07 film, it is maybe a good idea that it happened because they realized that it wouldn't do very well if they tried to make, try to go too mainstream and try to copy Bourne. And so the, you know, 47 is not Bourne. You, you gotta, yeah. And they, they saw all the elements that they tried to make more mainstream, tried to change around and how that didn't work. And so they went back, and now we got this much more faithful adaptation. Now, the... Zachary Quinto is... He's playing John Smith. And it's not necessarily the John we know from the games, but... He is, yeah, it's, it's, no, just, just in case I'm not going to give away exactly, but he, he gives a great performance and he's, you know, you have to have a real, you have to have a real presence to, you know, to be memorable next to this, you know, cloned killing machine, excuse me, and yeah, Zachary Quinto really delivers as I knew he would.
and the where in the 07 film 47 did get to kill a number of targets of actual people with with backgrounds and you know where where you kind of sort of knew you know something about them and there was some reason why he was good in this it is mostly faceless goons dozens and dozens of faceless goons so again maybe it's good that we had the 07 film so that could have that element and in this it's just him gunning down people that li literally faceless like they they usually have a mask on and you know we're we're a full uniform and yep they're they're working for bad guys so they're definitely evil so just take them down as in in as the, and and in spite of that the the movie actually does have some sense of of like ethics and a and and an emotional heart to it which is very impressive to maintain in spite of all of that oh i imagine some will say that the two really don't mix or meld There is a surprising amount of character exploration in this, and I'm not sure I should say anything about that that I haven't already, but yeah, just you you see these characters when they're not running for their lives, or sometimes when they are, just when big decisions have to be made, and when and and sometimes when they're just waiting for something how how they behave what they yeah you know various and you know sometimes it's them by themselves sometimes it's you know it could be argued that maybe you know Katya actually does calm down by bathing but it's still a stretch but yeah the the whether whether by themselves or interacting there there are a lot of character moments here and there actually are for every major character has like Thomas Kretschmann deliciously plays the main bad guy in this and he does not have a lot of screen time he's basically the guy sitting and guiding everything else he's he's safe by himself far away and he still gets genuine character moments again you know by himself interacting with others and yeah the as promised from the trailers and, and such you do get to see 47 use the sniper rifle and it's pretty epic he uses his his signature silver 45s and he does indeed walk around with the red tie white shirt and italian black suit he even he even specifies at one point there's yeah it's is not a spoiler and it's basically Katya and he are like going into a place and he like hangs his jacket you know and he you know checks around for you know touches around inside of the the closet and, you know and and then closes it and she's like bombs moths they love it's it's italian they love that <laughs> and the moths anyway i think you know what i mean and you know he uses his knives he goes hand to hand some and the movie just you know you have gunfights you know hand to hand chases on foot and by vehicle and yeah it's it's awesome action 
and it's genuinely like you know it's it's over the top the way i mean there he does a million things in this that you can't do in the games for one thing and that he probably wouldn't but it's kind of like they again if you if you just go by the games the games themselves you probably couldn't make much of an action movie out of it would be very limited compared to action movies and you know because in in the games you you run around and you you know you set up you know for for accidents you find a good place to snipe from it does not really make for a good big action movie and with something like this they're going to want a big you know a a big action movie you can't just you know as much as it would make a ton of sense to do a 47 movie where it is literally a a political thriller and you know you spend a lot of time getting to know the various you know major political players and characters and you know you're watching 47 planning how he's going to take them down and such you know there are great movies for that too i mean if if you do want a a movie that really captures a lot of 47 crap what's it called the maybe i'll remember but yeah. That they they remade it in like '98 with Bruce Willis, and it was terrible. Even though he did shoot Jack Black, which was good, but the original of that movie, yeah, it's it's named after some animal. I don't remember exactly, but yeah, that really gets the whole you know taking his time, picking his equipment, and this kind of thing, and. Yeah, that kind of movie is not going to get a big crowd for the summer, you know, the way that, yeah, and, and that's, of course, you know, any, you always have to kind of figure out, do you, you know, do you try to just, you know, satisfy the, you know, do, do you go for that, you know, almost kind of political thriller with, a, an, an assassin who, you know, takes his time and prepares and really, you know, very carefully kills? Or do you make an all-out action movie? You know, neither is going to completely satisfy the players because you can play it both ways in, you know, mostly. And, yeah. Anyway, returning to, to the action, this movie basically says, what if 47 had almost no self-preservation or at least he knew exactly how much he could do and win and such and just unleashed him upon the world so you know there's yeah there there are a number of different situations where he's not just on foot and you know and where he has set up gadgets that you would never find in the games and yeah like I said, the gadget's very limited, thankfully, but yeah, this is, it captures 47, which is almost, few capture 47, but this movie really gets the essence, and yeah, and the the really cool music from the trailers, yeah, the, the movie has badass music like that as well. And there's this kind of Terminator 2-ish self-aware but not meta humor in, you know, dialogue. So I don't want to mention the yup line. And there's, you know, where Quinto says, you know, this is going to sound strange because it is. And, you know, some, you know, and someone says, you know, pretty crazy, right? And and just, yeah, it, it knows how it just insane this this idea is at its core and it it goes for that you know it, it you, you kind of do have to do that with a concept like this and yeah the action is already someone mentioned you know 
very elegant, choreographed, over the top, and ridiculous. And there are various references to the games, and this to an extent captures the European flair that is part of the games, except for Absolution. And the, you know, I, I wrote down various of the many complaints that were rightly directed at the 07 film. And to go through them, you know, people said that it was very much a video game film. That is absolutely true. That's not so much the case here. I, if you watched this and you didn't know there was a video game behind it, you're not going to think it's a brilliant film, but, you know, it doesn't feel like it was something, you know, it, it feels as much like it was just, you know, someone gave a 13-year-old, you know, a few hours in a candy store by himself and left a notepad in there with him and then once he passed out from the you know once once he came down from the sugar high and eventually passed out they opened the door slightly got the notepad out got through you know discarded the stuff that just made no sense and tried to glue the rest of it into a script and yeah, that's about. It. I mentioned that I'm recommending this, right? But <laughs> I'm normally not a, a big fan of the just really dumb. But when they're this fun and just and genuinely well made, like that's that's another thing with the the first. It really didn't look that good or sound that good, and yeah, this this really does. I mean, again, if you go into this not having any clue about the games or anything and you just want to turn your turn your brain off for an hour and a half and just have fun with something that's big and explodey and where a lot of people die in fun ways yeah this is probably gonna do it for you now the another thing that was said of the 07 one was that it was bland and yeah, which I wouldn't say of this, that it was difficult, so bad that it was difficult to finish. Yeah, not of this either. The, you know, that it was dull overall and that the plot was dull also. Yeah, and it was also way too complicated for its own good. Too gory, sadistic, monotonous, hates, you know, hate, hates women, mind-numbing, humorless. Okay, superficial they both are. And discount born, dry acting. I don't know, some people are maybe not... You might not love the acting in this, and you might not... You might think that the characters are just too limited. I can understand where you're comfortable. I sat down having, you know, all these hours of fun with this cloned killer in my mind ready to to enjoy and yeah I mean if you go into this and you you know be aware it is very much it's a movie where people don't express their emotions very much and a lot of the time it seems like they don't have them and yeah I can understand that that might be really frustrating if if you're not into it or if you're not prepared for that and yeah if that's going to bother you then this movie is not for you and that is not you know any kind of insult i would if excuse me if i hadn't been if i if i'd gone into this not knowing it was about clones i might have been turned off by that element myself the the Oh, 07 one was also called cheesy. I suppose there are times where this is cheesy. And it was said there was, you know, forced, try to force you to feel something. I would say in this, it comes fairly naturally, the, the feelings. And then there's the romance, bad dialogue. 
this is going to sound mean, but Timothy Oliphant with a shaved head kind of looks like he had chemo, and it really just... And Rupert Friend, and, and this is again, I love Timothy Oliphant. Rupert Friend, we just got to know each other. I think that the, the L word is a little bit too much for, for me right now, but if we can if we can give it time, I want to see where this relationship can go. But Timothy Oliphant, just, yeah, not, not, not a good look for him. But Rupert Friend, he can pull the bald head off. I, I, I have not yet seen him with hair. I might, actually, I think I saw some photos of him from other stuff before, but, I mean, to me, the guy just, you know, in, in my mind's eye, the guy is bald. So, you know, when I see him with hair, I'll have to readjust to, to that, but, yeah. And the, you know, the first also tried to kind of, and I, I theoretically applaud, it tried to capture the, the third person perspective camera angles from the game, where it's basically the, the camera is, you know, I don't know, 30 centimeters behind, you know, 47's head, and then as of Blood Money and Absolution, the last two games, it's, you know, it's it's still in that general distance, but you can turn it freely at 360 degrees, and yeah, the first movie tried to capture that, and it just came off awkward, and I, I, I want to applaud it, but you just, you do have to, to keep the... You, you have to select some things that you have to just interpret or leave behind. You can't do everything the same in different mediums. And that's where, if I showed someone clips from the first movie and just, you know, of where, where it really clearly has that third person, you know, they'd say, is, is this like just a really, you know, true to life cutscene from a game or something, you know. And it shouldn't look like that. It just you you should you know. Yeah. And the let's see, and and yeah. Finally people of course also said that it it took itself too seriously. And again you you have to have some fun when you're dealing with barcoded, bald, DNA altered killers in Italian suits. This is directed by a man who previously only directed commercials. And some have said that this feels like an Audi commercial. The whole thing? Parts of it, okay, sure. But. Yeah, but I didn't really feel like like yeah. There's there's a chase scene where they use an Audi, and of course the camera is making love to the vehicle. That's that's you know they could have used a completely non-brand vehicle, and the camera would have behaved the same way. But yes, that that portion does maybe feel like in a commercial for it, and and certainly. The very beginning, it's just like cars are just being scanned by one of 47th gadgets. And they make sure to say that each of these cars is an Audi. So I guess the bad guys aren't so bad. They know where to shop, you know. So and the and this was filmed in Singapore, Berlin, and Brandenburg. And those are also the locations where it's set. This does not really have the Christianity and sometimes other religions and Ave Maria, which is all over the games. But then the first one did, and they're maybe again trying to go away from. They didn't. They didn't ditch everything that the first one did. That you know. But again, we have the first one for the you know that whole religious thing. Now, we, 
whenever you have a an adaptation of you know maybe it's especially when it's video game you know video game to movie or movie to video game you know there are going to be people who love it because they already love the thing that it's adapting there are going to be people who hate it because it didn't stay true enough to the you know the source material and i try to place myself purely in the middle and say i mean I won't always care, but in this case, I do definitely care about the source material. But, you know, can it stand alone? Which I feel that every, you know, every piece of fiction, to some extent, should be able to stand alone. And, you know, maybe it helps if you, you know, if you know the surrounding parts. But nothing should just be, no, no piece of fiction should just be a step between two different, you know, there should be something going on so that you can tell the, you know, so you can get a sense of what the, the overall thing is, you know, yeah. And, you know, it is possible to make a good adaptation, which is still a bad film or game, or vice versa, a bad adaptation, which is, you know, a good film or game and honestly it's an okay adaptation it gets most of the stuff the, I think if you're just a fan of the games and you're coming into this I think the thing that will bother you the most is probably Katya and that's still just this thing if you want a mainstream movie that it that that goes for action then you pretty much can't you know get oh and i should mention diana is in this anyway yeah you can't completely get rid of but katya is much much better than olga kurilenko's character so yeah and it's as a film, it's good. It's it's a lot more fun than you'd think for, you know. But yeah, it's it's a fun ride that doesn't really. I mean, you you have to adjust your. I mean, there there are things in this that are absolutely. If if you go with when you go into this if you go into this if this is if this is appealing to you this is not realistic that is absolute that is not what it is at all there's there's a bit where two people you know jump onto the the roof of a moving train and they bump and they bounce and they roll off down onto the tracks and then you're like well, I mean, they're dead. Like their spines are destroyed. They're 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 you know two two piles of mush and broken bones. No, they get up and start fighting each other. If if that is just too far, and it, I completely understand why it, why it might be, then this is not your movie. And the yeah. I think that pretty well covers that and it is indeed an R rating and yeah it's it's a lot of I, the the idea of which to be fair the 07 was as well the the idea of doing hitman without it being an R would just make no sense excuse me and this one is not excuse me as this one has a lot of blood, but it doesn't have an awful lot of actual gore. Again, it's these... You can just barely tell that they're human. They're essentially, you know, just walking, you know, suits of armor. 
So, yeah, when these guys die, you don't really, you know, yeah, there, there, you know, there might be some blood or they might completely disappear. And there are some that are really brutal, but you don't really see anything. And that, again, the first one you very much saw, like, when, yeah, you know, you've got, you know, swords going through people's bodies. You've got you know, people being blown up, and just, yeah, but the, yeah, and, yeah, I think that pretty well covers it, and, yeah, it's just a fun film, and whether you've played the games or not, and I suppose, suppose you played games, suppose you hate them, you could probably still enjoy this. The Again, just take it at face value. A genetically spliced, you know, killing machine in human form it fights a, you know, an endless army of faceless goons and a woman with, you know, extreme sensitivity to, you know, you know, ex extremely perceptive senses helps him. And there is there is some emotion stuff in there, but mostly it's just a lot of people dying in fun ways. And really badass action. Yeah, if that appeals to you, then, then you're going to like this movie. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.